Hi everyone, welcome to the live webinar with AdWall Markets. My name is Chris. Today, of course, uh, always Wednesdays, the focus is on strategy and we're going to take a look at a mixture of candles, Fibonacci and support and resistance levels. First of all, though, be aware that this particular webinar is shown to a global audience, just like all of them actually, and uh, may not be suitable for everyone. Please visit AdmiralMarketsGlobal.com, select your country of residence and contact the appropriate entity to find out if it is suitable for you. Also, please note that trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered high risk. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. By continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer and you are aware of the risk involved when trading. All right, thank you so much for your attention on that. We're going to be taking a look, of course, at the charts. Let's drag over this MT4 Supreme Edition uh, version. Sorry about that. I didn't drag it enough. There we go. And let's take a look at what's going on um, using these tools that uh, I discussed, support and resistance, and uh, fibs and candles. So basically for support and resistance, I use a couple of things. I use uh, Admiral Keltner, which is part of this MT4 Supreme Edition. It's like the MT4, but there are uh, a lot of extra features added to it, among others, uh, indicators like the Keltner and the pivot point and this mini terminal are just a couple of them uh, that uh, are added to the MT4 platform. Uh, I also typically use fibs. I use moving averages. I use fractals, all right? And um, tops and bottoms and round levels. So basically, you know, not nothing extraordinary. Sometimes I use the Murray math, which is a special indicator that looks at the fib ratios set out in musical uh, octaves. Quite an interesting uh, indicator. We might take a look at that later on, if you like. But uh, basically, I use that for higher time frames, especially. Uh, for just generally, if I'm just looking at the market, uh, I kind of look at, uh, I don't look at the Murray math. I focus on the Admiral Keltner weekly period points. Uh, I add fractals and uh, like this, although you don't see it on every webinar that I have just to keep the charts clean. Trend lines, fibs, as I mentioned. So basically, uh, the first step that I always do when analyzing the charts is look at higher time frames daily chart, for instance, to see if price is at a, a strong or resistance level or not. For instance, the euro dollar yesterday, uh, when it was moving up, I was talking about 115 as a strong level to reckon with. So that is based on the daily chart. Well, that's based on two things. First of all, it's a round psychological level. 115 is an even number. So that's something to always be aware of. Second of all, let me move the mini terminal here a bit lower. All right, or perhaps I'll close it for a second. Uh, there are tops here on the left. Uh, let's see. There are tops on a weekly chart right here. This one, right? This is a resistance level right up in here. These highs, all right? So let me make that red so it's more uh, fits what we expect from our resistance. There we go. All right. So you can see 115, this is 147, uh, 114.75, 115 is the round level, of course, so we can put there a level two. Great. So that's a resistance zone, basically. And as you can see, as price gets into it, right, because this was still a lot of momentum. There was a lot of momentum here, as you can see. And so it didn't turn around right away. It had to make a retracement, make a higher high with some divergence, lose kind of the speed it was showing before that. And then it started to reverse, right, or uh, retrace. Now, for my opinion, I was already telling you yesterday that I'm not sure which one of the two will become more likely. Uh, it 115 is an unknown factor. I thought it was 50/50. It could return. It could retrace. It could reverse. Uh, I didn't necessarily think there was any particular advantage of either of the two. It really depends on how price responded to that level. In this case, I think it's it looks pretty. It looks pretty impulsive. It looks pretty strong, the downside. Yet, it could still be a correction, actually. It could be an impulsive correction. So I'm not ruling out 
further upside later on. But certainly, you know, the reaction has been quite uh, quite steep, and you've got a almost 100 pip move to the downside since then. Anyone who is a reversal trader could have been on the lookout for such a trade. I'm not a big reversal trader. I'm not really one that likes to trade these types of setups. So it's not something that I really keep an eye on. But if you enjoy it and you know you think that uh, reversal trading is something you that matches you and suits you, that 115 level uh, and resistance zone of your dollar was definitely a zone that uh, would match you know what you're looking for. Uh, and uh, anyone looking for a clue regarding the entry would have seen divergence between these tops. Uh, around the third level here, this third bar, the close of that candle, showing that there's confirmed divergence. Uh, so I would say probably uh, engulfing twins, right, could have been the best trigger uh, in that in that zone, the best entry for the reversal as well on this hourly chart, at least the four-hour chart. Probably this engulfing twin got a small retracement there halfway as well. Those could have been potential setups for reversals. I'm not a big reversal trader. I would rather trade with the trend, and I took the trade from here to there. And as you know, yesterday, price did not reach the target yet. We were looking at price about here. It was pushing neatly to the upside, though, and I was already in positive territory. And eventually, the target got hit. I put the target at 114.66, just below the 114.75, three-quarter level, uh, because I don't like aiming for the very last kind of, you know, the very last pip. I'm not a person who likes to aim at, let's say, 114.74, uh, 8 to get the very last uh, you know, push out of it. Uh, if I see that there's resistance at 114.75, I'll tend to go a few pips below that. Right? In this case, I even went to 114.66 uh, or 68. I think 66, but anyhow, detail. So uh, why? I for me, it's just trading psychology. I get nervous if it's close, but just like misses my target. So it's that's not good for me. So that's my own kind of psychology. You might be di you're you're probably different than me in some ways. So you know that might be good or not for you. I don't know, but at least you know why I do that. And uh, some of you might rather aim for 111, 114, sorry, uh, 72, or even more aggressive. Maybe you would keep the trade and and exit upon the reversal pattern. It's a risky if you're not watching the charts, but so, um, yeah, my motto is what, or the motto I've heard other traders say is, what is a pip among friends? One pip among friends or a few pips among friends. So, you know, <laughs> meaning you don't have to aim for the very last uh, push. Um, so that's my, uh, my idea. At this moment, with regard to the structure of this particular uh, setting, I think that, let's take a look at the daily chart for a second. And uh, I would say if price breaks back below yesterday's low and the weekly pivot point, right? I think that that could be a signal that there could be a bigger correction going on. I still don't think it's going to be a reversal, personally, considering the fact that price has broken above 113. My overall view has now been turned bullish because of this, this, this massive momentum to the upside, really. Um, so, But I do think there could be a correction of, for instance, let me check, maybe this leg or this leg. Let's use this one to be a bit more conservative. So if price does break below this weekly pivot point and yesterday's low, price could go back to the 23.6 fib, for instance. Maybe even get down to the 38.2 fib. So there could be some retracement territory there. Uh, and then eventually price might continue with the larger uptrend. All right, so 23.6 fib could be one around 113, the broken top. Now turn into support. Uh, 38.2 fib has also two bottoms nearby, giving extra confidence to a potential bounce. Uh, those are, you know, all things to consider as well besides the fibs. But I'm not sure, of course, if price is going to make that downside. Uh, that really depends. So far, it's been impulsive, but it doesn't even have to use this fib on the daily chart. 
it could, first of all, one second, on a four-hour chart, let's take a look at that. It could retrace just simply, let's see, still this leg on the four-hour chart. All right, what does that give us? I'm hesitating between two particular swings, but uh, let's see. Basically, from this fib, 114, 1350, 113, still pretty strong support levels. And we're seeing some bounce here. We're seeing a, a pin bar, actually, as we speak. I don't think that that maybe it's, could be tradable, I guess, but I don't think it's very interesting for me at this moment. I would probably rather wait for some hook back like this. If price fails to break this bottom, and we've had five to six hours not breaking this particular particular bottom and kind of hooks back like this, it could be worth trading a bounce and price might continue in, in a triangle formation like this. Right? And then this could be a hook back within that triangle. Like that. Um, so, so from this perspective, I think uh, it could be uh, there's a good candlestick at a fib at you know, pretty decent support levels considering the rate the consolidation on the left considering the weekly pivot point so those are all you know pretty good to go check 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 um, regarding the entry I would probably rather wait for the failure to continue and then it bounce up in that case I think there's a better chance that this swing is over to the downside and there could be some upside not sure how much. Once again, if price could just retest the R1 and that's it. So any target, I think, conservatively would probably, uh, you know, um, aim for a conservative target in this case. Uh, Dushan has a good question. Uh, whether I use the AO to support analysis or do I used only for divergence and I use it for divergence and I use it for um, momentum to see if the momentum is like confirming like this the end of a swing with three red bars like this is typically the end of a swing like this all right doesn't mean that price cannot push a little bit higher as you can see here by the way that's also valid for this if you have three bars like this then also the downside swing in this case is over and I use it to draw fibs. So if you look at it on the hourly chart, right, um, from this perspective, the four-hour fib to use is probably from this swing, right? Because this is where price crossed below the zero line. But I'm not using this swing from here to here because if I look at the daily chart and I look at this entire up move, I don't want to put the fib on the, on the smallest little leg here because I think that this could be a moment where it corrects a bit deeper. So I basically think that this fib is too risky and I'd rather use a wider fib, which is why I use this bottom to here. So that's, that's the reason really um, because otherwise I would use a fib from here to here. But because of the divergence on the four-hour chart, hourly chart, even daily chart, um, although it's daily is not a, a great one, uh, daily does show some, um, some weakness compared to this upside, right? So those are all things saying, okay, um, you know, the trend is not necessarily over. Divergence is not something that immediately takes into effect. Then, boom, I don't know where trend is over. 
but sometimes it does, right? Sometimes the trend is actually over. So it's it's more of a warning signal, more of a warning sign, more of a, kind of a heads up like, okay, time to take some profit perhaps, time to reduce the risk, reduce, scale out, be more careful with trading with the trend, tr risk less on those trades, don't trade at all perhaps, you know, stuff like that. And if there is enough evidence or let's say enough confluence, then even reversal trades uh, and divergence is important for reversal potential trades. So, so that's it regarding the euro dollar. Um, I don't expect that this bounce is really going to go up a lot because this correction was strong and I think it's going to take its time to consolidate here. Um, so I don't think there's any rush with the euro dollar personally, but I would consider myself, I would consider that the analysis, not wrong, but invalidated if price you know, breaks today or tomorrow above 115 and has a good four hour candle close above this 115. Yeah, then things are changing. Then this probably was it. That was the correction. That's it. Over. And uptrend is back into force, I would say. Let's take a look, a little bit more at some practical examples on the pound USD of recent uh, events. And we talked about pounds, of course, yesterday as well. We were talking about this fib. And I said that my analysis was involved. I don't know why I said that, actually. I was incorrect, actually. Um, that because I... I'm not sure why I thought that, but when I looked at my wave analysis again, um, I noticed that that wasn't true because the 50 fib was still valid. I probably just drew the fib incorrectly yesterday. It's not necessarily true, actually, because as long as price stays above the 50, 61.8 fib, it could still easily be a wave four, in fact. And uh, so I probably just made a fib drawing there, a different difference. But uh, if price were to break below the 61.8, then I don't think the, 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 the wave count is not necessarily invalidated, but is unlikely. The real invalidation level is the top of wave one, which to my recollection is this spot here at 127.60. So it's roughly plus minus. So for price to really invalidate wave four, uh, that would be the level. But below 128, upside seems really less likely. For the moment, Price uh, made a slightly lower low, hit the S1, moved up again, made a doji, and is moving up again. So anyone aggressive enough to look for reversals to complete this potential wave four might have been able to trade this already. Uh, who knows? Hopefully you did. If not, we'll analyze it right now. Uh, basically, trend channel is still in effect. You can see price bouncing off of it multiple times. Now the impulse to the upside is becoming more... Um, more serious. So let's take a look at this. And from my perspective, if price were to make one more downside, it looks like you never know, but here at this moment, it looks like a potential weakness, right? Not that I want to trade that, by the way, because price bounced pretty heftily, hefty, heftily uh, strongly, yeah, it's maybe easier word, uh, at the, this zone. So from my perspective, this is probably more of a bounce material. So therefore, uh, you know, we could see price make that dip and bounce again up. Maybe I'm too optimistic with the pound, but as long as it, as long as it stays above the S1, I am still thinking about a reversal. And Andy is as well, although his first trade got uh, stopped out for a loss, I think, unfortunately, but he got back in. So hopefully we're right about this and it uh, follows the the um, the bounce and continues to the upside. One good thing would to would be to have a daily chart, daily candle that's close 
with the close near the high. That would be pleasant. In that case, I think that's a pretty good, pretty good bullish candlestick pattern on the daily chart. Next thing to keep in mind would be sometime later this week, a breakout above the weekly pivot point and the trend line to the upside. That would be sweet too as a confirmation. So those would be the next steps, I think. Of course, I don't know if the price will make this retracement. Really, it doesn't have to. Pretty strong momentum. And it might make one more push up. If it does, I think there's a good chance it will react at the weekly pivot point and trend line. And I will wait for that reaction and try to try to trade uh, the breakout after the correction. If it doesn't reach the pivot point and does move down, then I would look for a bounce around 128.25, 128.40. Uh, All right, so this is how you can use candlesticks at the at Fib, Fibonacci levels and price uh, basically confirming the reaction to this to these Fib levels and support resistance always important of course to understand break or bounce levels we know that the previous top is important we know this trend channel is important we know the weekly pivot point is important. We know the S1 is important. Those are all different types of support resistance levels that are important for understanding if there's going to be a breakout or bounce. And uh, one of them is this Admiral Keltner. You can see how price has not been able to break below it. It has been bouncing off of it. So if you're perhaps interested in the Keltner, there's going to be an extra article on it, um, one and a half weeks from now, if I believe. So you might want to check check it out. You can do that by going to blog right here, right? Analytics blog. Uh, and it, But if you're interested in downloading it right away, you can do that too. Just go to platforms and then MT4 Supreme Edition, free download. And here you can see more info about what you actually get in return for that download, um, ranging from the indicator package to all kinds of goodies and uh, tools and indicators. So those are the three majors, um, you know, things we discussed yesterday, kind of reflecting back on how that went. What, what, what can we do next? Let me think for a second. Uh, Oz, we talked about the Aussie too. And I said that I would be interested in a four hour candle that breaks above the weekly pivot point. In that case, I don't think this is a reversal. I was talking about the reversal potential here at this level and a potential head and shoulders. But if a price break above that weekly pivot point, I think that there is a good chance of a continuation. So we had a good candle and we had a good continuation. Price moving up some 50 pips or so. So that was a good breakout. Uh, yesterday's daily candle as well, closing above it, closing near the high, signaling to bounce back up. So what about now? From my perspective, momentum is pretty strong. I would not be looking for reversals at this R1. I think this, this candle is significant. I think that uh, there's a good chance that after this correction there will be a continuation, maybe some consolidation, but there should be a continuation, I think, considering this momentum. And there's a good chance the price will retest that resistance zone that it's been using before at 77. Then it all depends how price will respond there. Will it be again the bounce? Will it be a breakout? I'm open to both. Probably, although, no, I don't know. Really, it's both are possible. I mean, so far, Dalsby has not been able to break to the upside, despite its multiple attempts. I, I mean many attempts, right? <laughs> but it hasn't managed. Could it do it now? Yes, I think so, but let's see. Definitely keeping an eye on 77. Uh, we had talked about the Kiwi and well, after this candle, 
it's pretty simple that Kiwi downside is not interesting anymore, despite the break to the downside. And that's something, this break right here with the trend line, that's something not that strange because even though price <clears throat> might break a trend line, an important trend line, it doesn't mean it's necessarily a reversal right away. It could be a strong retracement and the previous trend could be back into force as that correction or retracement uh, is completed. So from, from this perspective, um, I'm not interested in shorts anymore. Even though yesterday I was saying price is breaking, let's wait for a pullback and continue. That made sense if price would have behaved correctively. What I mean with that is if price would have moved uh, in, a, in a bear flag pattern like this, Right, and then continue to to the downside. So, one of the things that we would be looking for is putting it through from here to here, and we wouldn't we would expect the price to retrace not more than thirty eight point two fib max fifty, right, somewhere in there. So when price hit the thirty eight point two fib already in one shot like that, rather than hitting the twenty three point six, then down, then up, then down, then up, then down. You can already see an angle difference between what it should look like, like as a bear flag and what it actually looked like. This was way more aggressive to the upside. Uh, so this was not, not a bear flag formation. It could have turned into one potentially, but it, it didn't. So now it got impulsive. So this downside is out of the out of, off the table, out of the window. I wanted to combine the both and uh, got to be thinking about Kiwi, I think Kiwi upside again, but I wouldn't trade it now. I would wait for probably today's candle to close near the, near the high, wait for yesterday's high to get broken, which it did, but wait for the close to get near the high too, wait for a bit of retracement and continuation. All right, so we had some Euro retracements against New Zealand. And um, the odd, pound odd, saw some downside. Pound yen, euro yen saw some downside as well. All right. On New Zealand uh, continued higher, by the way. As we were talking about it here and said, yeah, there could be a small push left to the third fib resistance level. But then a retracement, a correction is likely. I was saying if a correction happens here, then a breakout to that level makes sense. But if it continues right away, there's a small trade, and then there should be a reaction to that. So we add the ladder, the, the second one, a break, small break, 40 pips perhaps, and then now we're in a correction mode. So... Just checking something, folks, one second. Uh, from my perspective, the bullish momentum looks good. I think that there could be continuation within the next few days. I don't see anything that could necessarily stop that. I might be missing something. So if you're, if you're seeing something like, oh, how about that, let me know. But I, I don't see anything particularly dangerous as yet on this odd New Zealand. So it looks like it's making this channel. It might even turn into a triangle eventually. But as long as price stays above the 50 fib, I think that any price action that moves choppily like this is just setting itself up for one more bullish break, in my view. So once again, it boils down to uh, putting the fib on a piece of momentum, waiting for candlesticks at these fibs, uh, and support for a bounce. So with these three concepts, right, you can really combine them to, to make a, a trading plan that is flexible, comprehensive at the same time, simple, but I guess, but, you know, from my perspective, um, simple at least. Uh, if you're new, maybe not, of course, so always reach out if you have questions. Um, but, you know, it, it shows you how you can 
sorry, I'm stumbling about my words, but it shows you how I can use kind of a couple of tools uh, to, uh, to tackle the markets, basically. All right, so question. Can you explain what is the difference between AO and MACD? There are more similarities than differences, I would say. The AO and MACD both are good for indicating divergence, both are good for showing what the momentum is, the upward downside slash trend. There are also different MACDs, different oscillators, uh, AOs as well, but that said, let's take a quick look at both of them. All right, so pretty similar, I would say. There are just a couple of differences. I mean, this is not the MACD that everyone uses. You can have MACD with more fancy colors, I think. The AO shows red and blue, which I like. I think I think that other MACDs could do that too. I'm not 100% sure about that. Let me double check that. So the red and blue kind of give the angle, which I like. I'm not sure if other MACDs could do that actually, but um, the MACD has a has a has a MA in it as well, which is pleasant. So we have an idea about the strength of up or down. And if the uh, the MA is kind of outside of it like this, then that that shows a retracement or reversal. Right? Whereas if it's in like this here, uh, there's a breakout. So that's I guess a, you know plus for the MACD. Uh, let's take a look at maybe the four-hour chart. Is there any difference that stands out? Uh, uh, really not much. Huh? I, I don't see it. Really seems so similar. There are small differences in in its movement and how fast it falls or rises. So you got some some kind of small differences in, in the shape of these these ups and downs, but seems quite mi minor. All right, gold finally bouncing yesterday and price is continuing. Euro pound continuing, but finding some some struggle here today with continuation. More euro weakness at this at this point. Silver is bouncing. Dax bouncing. Dax. Breaking a higher high here, so it looks like this correction to the to the downside is over. Looks like good momentum so far. I think that uh, I would not be looking for downside. Upside maybe, but I would need to see a correction first of all. And S&P 500 keeps pushing. All right. Uh, we can take a look at the... Uh, let's see. Did we take a look at gold already? I'm not, yeah, we did. Sorry. So what else can we look at? Do you have any preference? Anyone have a particular currency pair, commodity, CFD in mind, stock indices? We can take a look at any of them.
The Looney. Absolutely. I don't look at that one that much, so it's a great choice. You can analyze it. The Looney is the dollar cat, for those that are wondering and not sure what the, the nickname uh, is for. It is for the dollar cat. And uh, dollar is certainly weakening. It's doing the same with the dollar yen. I'm not even sure if we looked at the dollar yen. I have a short-term memory problem here for the moment. I don't think we did, actually. So, no, we didn't. Um, so, yeah, dollar yen pushed to the upside. We were talking about that yesterday, too, uh, that this could be, you know, kind of running into struggle at 115. It didn't even make it there. 114.50 was all it did, and then boom, it's been falling down ever since. So, this does look like a good uh, reversal at this moment. Good reversal candle as well. Two candles with wicks. Right at the resistance level here, this resistance 115. So to me, this could be a reversal. And I think that uh, there is a chance for that. Let me check something here. This is 78 pips. This is 65. All right. Uh, I will have to see. This is not a wave three. So let me take a look at the 50 minute chart. All right, it might still be a wave one and all in all. Um, and this is like a fifth wave extension. So it could be that, depending, I would like to see how price responds as it moves up. That could be a good short as it makes head and shoulders, and it might be worth trading to the downside. But I would definitely need some kind of confirmation as price moves up. Now, why am I talking about price moving up? Because I think that uh, it might move lower a bit, but I'm not interested in trading that. I'm interested in tr trading basically, waiting for the correction, and then trading it with the trend. Why do I think it's down? Because of the reaction it's had here. And the divergence here, the slowdown to the upside, the, the major resistance on the left. So I think that that could uh, send this back down. I think that there could be, if anything, at least an A, B, C, if not a one, two, three. So, but I want to short it now, right now? No, not really. I'd rather wait for a better price, get some confirmation as well, and then try to trade it down. Here, right now, uh, it might move lower, but just a few pips, pretty big risk, so I'd rather wait for a better position. But generally speaking, despite the uptrend it was in, now my view is, is more bearish at this moment, unless price, of course, breaks through 114.50. Anyhow, I got distracted. I was actually going to take a look at the dollar cat, which I'll do right now. Um, we can see a good breakout, and uh, price just made a correction like this. And uh, this is something I think we discussed. No, this looks very similar to other pair. Maybe it was the pound odd. Hmm. I'm not sure. This looks so similar to a pair. Maybe it was the dollar cat that we discussed that the upside here is limited to, to this resistance box. But I'm not sure if this was the dollar cat. If not, boy, boy, does one of these charts look very similar to this. But in any case, uh, the bottom here, the pivot point, the R1, that zone was not broken, and it kind of made a mild correction. Look at the angle as well of this, this sideways zone, and then boom, crashes to the downside, breaks the trend line, and you can see uh, price pushing through it. Now, it's not an easy one to, uh, to, to trade this confirmation breakout, because if you wait for that, you'll be trading it here. So it's possible. You know, stop loss would be a bit bigger, though, 110, um, so I'm not sure about that. It's possible. It shows a lot of momentum. The better one, obviously, if possible, would have been some, some entry at the Uncle from Twins here or to break out of these support levels. That would be better. So for anyone who's looking at the charts right now,
let's take a look at what we can expect. And let's see. We have divergence on the four hour chart. So it's it's becoming a double one. I would not look for shorts anymore. So I think that once this momentum is over, um, I would think that there's a, a decent chance of a bounce to the upside. Now I know that's reversal idea-ish, uh, so oh, you gotta be careful with that. And I would definitely not go long now. Don't get me wrong. But uh, if price shows some hesitation, kind of builds a falling wedge on a lower time frame, and price approaches mm, one of these pivot points, perhaps, right? That could be a bouncing spot. Now, I also want to keep an eye on this particular breakout candle. Because if the close is very near the low, it could easily continue to the downside for a couple of candles at least, right? One, two candles before it turns. So what could happen is that if it closes like this, you get one more candle, bearish candle, then you get a, a doji, then a small bullish candle, a small bullish candle, a bigger one, a hook back, and then an upside. So that's the kind of process that I need to see before I would think about trading to the upside. Now the, and the only reason why I'll be even thinking about trading upside as a reversal is because of the divergence on this multiple divergence on, on multiple time frames. Not a guarantee, but you know, decent signal there. Your odd is breaking this upside, by the way. Let's see how today's candle closes. If tomorrow retraces part of that candle to the pivot point, for instance, that could be an interesting continuation that would, that would entail uh, that would entail Aussie strength. Yes. All right, so something like this, depending on how the close is, could be a good breakout candle. And I think there's a good chance of a, a hook back. This could be momentum, correction. This could be a break, pullback, continuation. But I would like to see a good daily candle. Alrighty, folks. Well, I think that wraps it up for today. We will have new webinars tomorrow. We're going to take a look at some summer trading. And uh, we'll be looking at a lot of different things, small items that really don't fit maybe in one webinar, but we want to kind of combine, you know. So, you know, that's something we want to add and, and just throw into the mix. A uh, series of three webinars so you don't have to register for one by one. You can do for all three. Uh, we're just taking a look at some, some small items uh, one by one throughout those three um, throughout, throughout those three webinars. So uh, summer trading, uh, full in swing uh, tomorrow. So I hope to see you then. Next week, of course, we've got live trading sessions and again, uh, the educational webinar on Thursday. So we're looking forward to, uh, to seeing you there, hopefully. As always, you can reach out to us through this chat box. Uh, for those that are interested in using the tools that I, some of the tools I just showed you, you can go to Trading Platforms and then MetaTrader for Supreme Edition, which you find right here, Platforms, MT4 Supreme Edition. Try the free download. See if you like it. Plenty of stuff there I think that uh, you will like. So it's, it's worth your time, I think. And uh, thanks for your feedback, your questions, comments. Always like to, uh, to hear how, how it's going with you. Feel free to share uh, your trade ideas, charts, setups, 
open trades, close trades, and uh, we can make it more dynamic perhaps. Uh, Thursday, uh, we are going to take a look at, we call it summer trading, summer webinars. We're going to take a look at some small topics, basically, that don't fit in one grand webinar, but if we combine them, you know, they will have plenty of things to still say. So they're going to be shorter topics and multiple ones, mostly in each of these three sessions. So if you register for tomorrow, you're also right away signed up for uh, July 20, the next week, and August 3. Alrighty, folks. Wish you all great trading, above all. I uh, hope everything is going well with the trades, and uh, we'll see you very soon. Cheers.